Uh, good morning, everybody. We'll call the development committee meeting of August 20th to order and a roll call, please. Member Krajewski? Yes. Member Sorry. Chaplin? Here. Sorry. Member Gustin? Member Ozar? Here. Member Rutledge? Here. Chair Tornatori? Here. We have a quorum. <coughs> Do we have any public comments? No, no, in. no public comment signed in. Move on to the minutes. I'll let a motion to approve the minutes of August 6th. So move. Second. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions? Hearing none, saying none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed to minutes are approved. We got a regulatory. I'll let a motion to approve the CO. 51 24 zoning 24 23. Okay. Zoning hearing officers recommendation to deny a variation. We'll allow a boat on a trailer. And a variation of reduced the front yard setback required 30 feet to approximately five feet to park a boat on that trailer. Uh, there is a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Again, the zoning hearing officer's recommendation to deny. Anybody have any questions of Paul? It seems rather obvious. So we have a motion to approve. Uh, if you uh, want to be consistent with the zoning hearing officers, you would be voting no on the motion. Uh, roll call, please. Member Rutledge? No. Member Ozog? No. Member Chaplin? No. Chair Tornatori? No. And the motion fails. We got into item 6B. I'll entertain a motion to approve ECO 52 24, is only 24 5. ACHO's recommendation to approve a variation to increase the total size of a new single family home. From 2,547 square feet to 2,741 square feet. So moved. A second. Motion to second. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Motion to approve DC open. 30 years, 24 zoning, 2440. Menace, the zoning hearing officer's recommendation for variation. Reduce the west interior site setback 20 feet to approximately 13 feet. A variation to reduce the east interior side setback from the required 20 feet to approximately 10 feet, both for a house division. Second. Uh, second. I'm sorry. This I don't think we have a motion. We have a motion. There you go. The motion and a second. Any questions on this item? Hearing none, saying none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to approve DC 054 24 Sony 2450. The ZHO's recommendation to approve a variation to allow a 4-H project for property that's less than 40,000 square feet in size to have a min miniature oh. horse and donkey on the property. A motion oh. and a second. No second. There's not a second, second. yet. There's a motion and a second. Now, question. Thank you. Um, how big is the donkey? It's not. It's an oh, yeah, it's, it's a miniature donkey. Um, <laughs> okay, done. Cool. They're the pretty small short horse anyway, animated, the so there's two there's two M's, yeah, a horse and a donkey. Yeah. Yeah. The miniature They're both horse, miniature. The miniature donkey, yeah. both with an average height of about 36 inches. Smaller than a Great Dane, as the petitioner said. Okay. Oh, you okay. want them. There's no use yet. Any questions or comments <laughs> on... Uh, You're going to vote no just so you can adopt. On the right. donkey and the horse. Okay, <laughs> we have a motion and a second on this. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion okay. carries. Can I go visit Teddy Absolutely. Well, I had a motion to approve DCO 55 24, zoning 2456. So the zoning hearing officer's recommendation to approve Second. additional use to allow an existing shed to remain less than three feet from the interior side property line where it has existed for at least five years. There's a motion and a second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to approve DCO 56-24, T-2-24 text amendment, the DuPage County Zoning Ordinance, a Zoning Board of Appeals recommendation to approve a zoning petition, T-2-24 text amendment, Ordinance Chapter 37 relative to electric vehicle accessory dwelling units and dwelling units to add to the permitted and conditional use sections to allow for electric vehicle charging stations in all non-residential zoning districts and to add a new residential use requirement, bulk regulation for accessory dwelling units, the number of occupants in the accessory dwelling units, the number of kitchen setback requirements, dwelling units, and parking requirements. Okay, motion and that was the second, correct? 
Okay. Any questions, comments? Yes, I'm really sorry. Did you hear more about this? Because what I read in the packet, it looks like, okay, so it's required for all non-residential zoning districts. It makes me think it's bad for the building business. Um, and accessory dwelling units, number of kitchens. I don't know. I just wonder if this is too soon to require electric. I don't know that it's requiring it or be permitting it, I think, right? But it's not mandating it. It's oh, good. It. Okay. Right now, we treat electric vehicle charging stations as a automobile service station. Okay. Uh, so it's not clear. Uh, so we're just making it very, very clear that uh, um, you can have electric vehicle charging stations in both residential zoning districts and commercial zoning districts as a standalone use. They don't have to be connected with a service station, a typical gas station. They can be their own standalone. So it's permitting that required. Right. There you go. All right. Thank you so much. So you could just have a, I'm sorry. Um, go ahead. You could just have a, like a stanchion type thing that we've seen either residential or commercial. Well, it allows it in a single family home for your, as a, as for your domestic use, but okay. it would also more importantly allows it as a standalone stanchion uh, for a commercial or industrial use without having a full scale service station associated that has gas pumps, C stores and things like that. Okay. Got it. So the standalone is the key. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So the thing, yeah. so the charging stations that we have right outside the building in the parking lot, you could, in theory, have in your office parking lot or in your driveway. You could have um, you could have uh, what we have, for instance, out here. That would be considered ancillary to an existing permitted use. So we are allowing that, right. but it would also allow it for non-residential zone districts as standalone, without having any other. It would be the permitted use on the property. Okay. You would not have to have an office building or a, a, another gas station facility. It could be its own use on a non-residential. You could have it on a vacant lot. You, yes, you could have it on a vacant lot, but it would be the you, the primary use of the vacant lot. So, for instance, right now, those are ancillary to this office building. This ordinance would allow that as ancillary to an office building or another commercial building or a retail uh, store. You could also have an electric vehicle charging uh, facility as the primary use of the property. It would have to come in for a permit. Come I in for a permit, yeah. You would not need like zoning. would need zoning approval. Yeah, we're treating it as a standalone permitted use by itself now, along with being ancillary to other permitted uses like office buildings, C stores, other uh, other gas station facilities, things like that. All right, Member Oh, just to follow up. So, could you put an electric charging station in your garage? Do you have to get a permit for that? Yeah, you do now. Yeah. It's permitted now as an ancillary use. Okay. It's just an electrical upgrade. Okay. So you can do that now. Okay. And if you build a new house, you have to, right? Under the well, under the, the state, statute, state yeah, statute, there's there, there's some discussion about that. Yeah. But this this is not mandating that in this in this ordinance. We're not we're not proposing okay. that. Okay. Any yes. Just to clarify, it's been proposed at the state level, but it's not been approved yet, right? Like you don't for new for a new residential building you don't need to put a I'd have to verify that. Though. I'd have to verify that. We'll get back to you on that. The that one, could be pretty expensive the one thing homeowners. yes, the one thing for sure is that this ordinance is not mandated. Right. But right. we'll get back to you on the actual and details. I think the state statute doesn't require you to actually have the charging station. Just you just have to electrical. do all the electrical right. so that you can put it in right. our when you want it when you need it. It's new construction and it it's bad. Yes, not for you. Oh, thank you, Jack. I just had a couple quick questions. We've never done accessory dwelling units in unincorporated before, have we? I, I can't hear you guys. Yeah, I can't hear her either. Have we, allowed, have we done accessory dwelling units in unincorporated before this? Yes. yes. So yeah. the, the answer to that is yes. Yeah. Um, we do allow accessory dwelling units ancillary to the principal. It has to be inside the existing principal building, the house. It can only be for people who are family members. It has to be, the person has to be 62 years of age or older, uh, and you have to get a conditional use for that. And um, how much is the permit to, to do an ADU at this point? The zoning relief, uh, so for all conditional uses, the uh, zoning relief application for conditional use of $1,000 is $1,000. And that's um, because someone is asking for something for which they have to you know, pay the administrative cost of holding the Zoning Board of Appeals public hearing. 
So as a conditional use, it would be $1,000 to go through the zoning process. If they get entitlement, meaning they get approved, then they'd have to apply for a building permit. The building permit fees, um, I believe, are what, $20 for $1,000 of estimated cost of construction? Yeah. So it'd be $20 for each $1,000 of cost of construction, whether it be uh, you know, interior renovations, things like that. So there are costs, mm -hmm. and, and those are not costs that are, um, uh, they're not any extra costs because of what we're proposing. Those are just to be, be the normal zoning processing fees and the normal building permit fees. Mm -hmm. May I ask one more question? You may. Um, how yeah, many no. of how many of these ADUs have we previously had? Um, I guess go through for permitting process, and how many do you anticipate going forward so, after this change? So, um, in in the thirty two years I've been here, we have probably had twenty uh, conditional uses. Uh, we have had three instances where there have been conditional uses to allow for a family member to live in an accessory dwelling unit. Um, where the person is over the age of 62, uh, we've had, um, I believe, three instances where we have allowed a variation that it that it, it didn't need to be in the principal building. It could be in a detached building. Mm -hmm. And in one instance, uh, we allowed a variation for that person to be under the age of 62. Mm -hmm. So but effectively 20 um, that um, are, are, have been approved over the course of about 32 years. And, and you anticipate a lot more than going forward. This what what this ordinance is doing is it it takes away the need for the conditional use is still uh, required. You still have to go through the conditional use entitlement process, but it, would, it takes away the need for the person to be a family member. It takes away the need for the person to be over the age of sixty two. So there is no age limit requirement. There's no family member requirement. It also would allow um, as part of the conditional use for someone to have this accessory dwelling unit in a detached building. It can be in an attached building, but it can also be in a detached building. The um, the detached building uh, would have to be uh, an existing detached building at the time, uh, presumably the county board approved this ordinance. So let's just say hypothetically that the <coughs> county approved the ordinance uh, December 31, 2024. Any building that was built, that successor built after, or built in, in January of 2025 or thereon, you would not be able to uh, have a uh, dwelling unit in that building. It only has to be for an existing building that's in place at the time that the ordinance was approved. The other thing that it does allow too is, is that it, it increases the square footage that you're allowed to have from 400 square feet up to uh, 1,000 square feet, both in the main building, the house, or in the detached building. Thank you. <laughs> does it change the requirements for like the floor area ratio versus what we have now, I mean, it, it, it does. It, it, in terms of it, in terms of how much square footage can be used for the accessory dwelling unit, right? It doesn't change the overall floor area ratio requirements. So you can't, you could, you could, you still have to be within the floor area ratio requirements. For, yes, yes. But the only difference is, is that the ex accessory dwelling unit size increases to a thousand square feet. Yeah. But that thousand square feet still has to be within the overall. Okay. I think. All right. The other thing that's important to know too is all the parking requirements that are required will still remain. You can't have more than six passenger vehicles on the property now. You won't be able to have more than six passenger vehicles under this code. Are we limited to one accessory dwelling unit per property? One accessory dwelling unit per property. It has to be owner occupied, which means the, the person who owns the property can live in the accessory dwelling unit or they can live in the principal, but the owner has that's to live the on the property. Um, the other thing that we have in here is, is that uh, the uh, rental or lease agreements uh, have to be for at least um, uh, six months. You can't you can't uh, put someone in that accessory dwelling unit for less than six months, and that deals with the Airbnb issues. Yes. Thank you. Um, two questions, Paul. Isn't there a, a like a sunset provision on this? That like why do I remember there was a five year on this is basically kind of a test? No, this ordinance. There, okay. there, there have been sunset clause paid placed on other condition mm -hmm. uses that were part of the, the current um, iteration of accessory dwelling units. Uh, that was a test case. But this proposal, there would be no sunset clause. OK, and then my second question is from a, a real estate investor. 
they would not be able to do this on a renovation that they don't already have an owner on. Is that correct? Uh, in order to have an accessory dwelling unit, right. you have to live on the property, either in the Just house clarify, or the thank you. Yep. And the property has to exist. And right. it has to exist as well. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Now, 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 just to be clear, just to clarify that, I could have a vacant piece of property. I could build a house and I could live in that house and inside that house, I could have an accessory dwelling unit under this code. That would be okay. I just can't, in 2025, build a brand new house, build an accessory dwelling unit and try and put an ADU in that accessory unit. I can't do that. Uh, how, is it not, yeah. how is an accessory dwelling unit in a house it's not an accessory, it's is it? Basement. It's uh, attached. It is attached. Okay. okay. Yeah. The, the, once again, the key here is, is that the only provision of, uh, of uh, existing uh, building is for an existing detached building to have an accessory dwelling unit in. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the reason for that is, is that if, if, if someone has a vacant piece of property to build a house, um, the people who are living next door are used to living next to a, a, a vacant piece of property. Um, there's a reasonable expectation that a house would be built on that property someday. So having accessory dwelling unit inside the house is not going to be that much of a shock okay. to the person living next door. What could be a shock to the person living next door is that there's a house and there's a detached accessory building, a garage or a, possibly a shed. Um, that physical building existed presumably when the, the neighbor lived you know, move next door. So they're used to having a building next door. Now they may, they're not used to having that being a dwelling unit, but at the very least, the physical structure was there when they bought their property. That's why we're limiting the uh, detached buildings to having to be existing at the time the ordinance took place. So if a property owner decides they want to build <coughs> another bedroom or family room on their house, is that are they building an addition or an accessory dwelling unit? They, they, if they want to make it attached, they could add an accessory dwelling unit as an attachment. That's not a problem. So long as they met all of the bulk requirements, including the FAR, meeting the FAR requirements, heights, setbacks, and everything like that. So you could add onto your house and put an accessory dwelling unit in that addition. You just couldn't do it to your detached building. Anybody else? May I still clarify, Sam? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Still going from the part, you know, real estate investors. That's a big business in our county and and a community that I am in contact with. So again, so if they're renovating a home, they would not be allowed to do this. But what if there was a walkout basement that they wanted to segregate as a, oh. an ADU? Would they be able to get a conditional use or a variance or... Well, so once again, if you have an existing house that has a walkout basement, then you could convert that basement to an accessory dwelling unit, provided that you as the owner of the property lived in the building and the basement, the walkout basement was an accessory dwelling unit. You can live in the accessory dwelling unit as the owner or you can rent out, you know, the main floor mm -hmm. or vice versa. But you got to, in order to have the ADU, you, you got to live on the property. And, you live on the you have to live and the idea there is, is that, you know, home ownership means that there's going to be people that are going to be a little bit more responsible for the property and the ADU as well. That's the rationale for us. And, and, and to be clear, this is going to be a conditional use. So if someone came forward and said, I don't want, I, I, I don't want to live in the property. I want to rent both units. They could ask for the conditional use and they could ask for a variation to not have to meet that requirement. The likelihood of that getting approved at that point would be a policy decision. Okay. All right. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, I'll... Okay. Jim's got a comment. Jim, could you clarify the electrical vehicles real yeah. quick? The state law does mandate that we put in the potential for an electric charging station in the garage. So our code, when our last revision, we wrote it that basically you're putting in the box the pipe down to the panel and capacity yeah. in the panel. For future charging. Do we know how much that costs? It's a couple thousand dollars and it depends. Oh, well, okay. to, to do what we're doing, it's only a few hundred. Okay. If you're looking to add the charging station and they didn't require the charging station because there's such a variety and then you don't know what somebody's going to need. But you have to have 
40 amps capacity in your panel for it. Yeah. No. And the pipe has to be there so you can plug in the equipment when needed. So I mean for a two hundred fifty three hundred thousand dollar home. It's only a couple hundred bucks to do that oh, kind of work. Hundred, I think you said a couple when, thousand. When you're well, if you're installing the equipment, it's a few thousand dollars to get the wiring, the 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 charging unit, and everything else. But you're going to get that when you get your car. So you know what type you need. And over a mortgage. Yeah. Well, over thirty yeah. years, it's pretty small. Okay. Any other questions on this item? Anybody feel the need to take a roll call? That all is in favor? Aye. I need to post the motion here. New business. New business. Okay, just to remind everybody, we have this joint meeting at 11.30. We're, we're, we're struggling for a quorum. So if you can hang around, that would be great. I've got you on my okay. computer. Uh, without objection, we're adjourned. We have six so far. We have six.